All right, let's be positive. Come on. Because Twizel's out of power. They've just said they've lost their power on Twizel. Why is that? That's about to explain. Come on. Let's be positive. There it is, just ladies stop and right gentlemen. There. To the no negativity. Coach. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. It's happened live on the show, 103 night out. He strokes it to the fence of 226 balls. Test century number 26. Matt, let's be positive about former captain Kane, who is the New Zealand leading test run getter of all time. And a timely century to boot too. Good on him. The only thing I would say is, the B Mac, the Mac attack. He'd have had that a hundred ten balls ago, Mark. Yes. He'd have just attacked it, wouldn't he? <laughs> he would have had it off the first five <laughs> overs, mate. You know how it goes. Yep. Williamson, Williamson. He was a fantastic young player. Became a terrific young part of the Black Caps. I'm not sure he was ever the captain or whether he needed to be. We've seen him move on. We've talked about that, but this one he deserves. There's no two ways about it. I am more than happy to share with your listening audience that I messaged you this morning, said, forget about the cricket. By the time we come on, it'll be all over Roll, Bold and Rissold. And here we are, New Zealand leading by, what, 184 now? Yeah, so, yeah, 180. Look, OK, is this a victory for New Zealand if somehow we can scum out of this with a draw? Oh, if there's a draw comes out of this... You better believe it. Yeah. I mean, yesterday, yesterday, uh, the last couple of days, the struggle has been to make England bat again, and now they lead by, I wouldn't say a winning score, but certainly one that you could sneak a draw out of. Well, really, get to by the end of the day, Williamson now decides to go on. Um, Plenty of wickets in hand. I could see a 250 lead. Oh, 250 means it? they bat that in the first session, though, Baz Ball, don't they? So, yeah. Well, they've got to draw it out and bat into tomorrow. Yeah, they do. Do you think they can play for the win? No, but no. if they bat into tomorrow, 250 after soaking up the first session or most of it uh, might be enough. But I'm being positive, Mark. Yeah, I'm not saying you've got the strike power. 435 for eight in the first innings, England. You'd think that they would be able to chase down a low total. But, however, from this morning until today, this yeah, afternoon yeah, today, yeah, yeah. well, it's chalk and cheese. It uplifts the mood, mate. It uplifts the mood. Look, and, and as I was saying to, to Dre earlier, to Andre Adams, um, you know, we've been very fortunate in New Zealand cricket. Matt, me and Matt met way back in 2003 is when we started working together. So it's 20 years we've known each other, mate. And during that time, look, you know, the standing joke was always, you know, I'm at your Wallabies, you're at my Black Caps. But over the last 10 years or so, we've been very fortunate. We've had three of the best New Zealand bowlers ever in Bolt, Southie and Wags at a time. We've had Ross Taylor and Kane Williamson and the team together, and they've amassed almost 16,000 test runs together. So, you know, we've been, we've actually, th- th- this has been a golden age of New Zealand cricket. It's probably coming to its twilight time. I accept that. But there'll be a lot of young fans in the country who are going to take a while to get used to what we've always been used to, which is that the Black Caps are mostly pretty bad. Yeah, and they they were looking pretty bad heading into the day too, let's be honest, I mean, and the day before. But I, I suppose the beauty of it is, is, as you say, there are still up-and-coming cricketers who will have memories of these particular players to take them forward. And uh, Ross Taylor and... Kane Williamson, to me, Martin, may have even been better if they weren't captains. Now, I don't know, you know, how that will resonate with other people, but sometimes you see players and they're clearly captains. And then there's other times where you have these quieter guys and Williamson's a bit quieter. And you know what Ross Taylor was like. He's just very softly spoken. And I sometimes wonder whether or not the burden of the captaincy yeah, agree. helped or hindered, would we have seen more? I know it's a question you'll never have the answer to. I certainly wonder it about Williamson over the last couple of years. Two great batsmen and both nice to watch too. And honestly, uh, probably fulfill, fulfilled the potential they came into the Black Caps with. And you couldn't say that about all the Caps, could you? Let's be positive about Australian cricket because your T20 women are just extraordinary. So that that obviously counterbalances the fact that your men are playing with no underpants on against India, right? 
We don't even look at the men anymore, Martin. You know it's all about the women's sport, and yes. my wife told me I have to watch it, and I do. The thing about Australian women's cricket is, is actually they've been at it a fairly long time, and there's a very good program over there. And, and you know, like any country that has a entrenched program that goes back long enough, uh, you do start to dominate for a while. Um, obviously... It's a pretty big women's game in Australia as well, far bigger than New Zealand. And we've seen the women's team here play OK off and on, but never had a wide enough selection of players to have a, a fully functioning squad regularly. And that's where Australia are. So they should have won that one. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you could say that India... Uh, should have a good team too, but yeah. they don't England. treat their women as good as we do in Australia, Martin. This was the lead story on the Television New Zealand sports website today. And as soon as I read you the opening stanza, you get full with laughter and you wonder, who's in charge of this? I mean, who honestly makes these decisions? The YouTube influencer, um, Jake Paul... The YouTube, no, the YouTube influencer turned prize fighter Jake Paul was beaten by the half brother. I don't even have to go any further than that, do I? It's a clown headline. Do you take this seriously? Do yeah. you give a stuff about any of this? Uh, uh, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm being sick to the gills with this fight. Uh, Tommy Fury, obviously, he looks in good shape. He's beat Paul today, but he's a Neville, though, buddy. He's a nobody. Jake Paul has been able to do this on a massive fortune amassed by him and his family, his brother particularly. And without that money and that influence, he's nowhere. You know, he has funded his own career here. He hasn't fought for money. He hasn't had to win. He hasn't had to actually win any of these bouts probably. Uh, it's a circus. Um, you can't take either of them serious. The fact that it went the distance says a fair bit about the fight. Uh, no, I definitely wouldn't pay for it. I tell you what, I'm glad Fury won only because I just do not think the world was ready for Jake Paul to win. I find him obnoxious. There's not much about, there's not much about him I, I, I find entertaining. No, um, that's what I don't find. I just find it boring. That's I just find it. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't compel me at all. It's like watching two guys fight in a pub car park. Who cares, mate? You know. Well, it, 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 this makes no difference to anyone. And, no. and, and twenty years down the line, they, they might, you know, the, the the whatever they call them now, the dick pic generation. What are they? What are we up to? No, I, I don't just, know. I I mean, it's been... not Gen X or Gen, well, I don't even know who we are. But the, the point is that. Uh, this kind of celebrity disappears extremely quickly. Celebrity that used to be built in the past was a little bit harder to cancel. This kid's not far away from disappearing. Like, I'm not saying he will, but it, it, it could be around the bend. You know, his brother there a few years ago went to a Japanese forest where people uh, apparently take themselves to um, uh, take their own lives and, and streamed it and showed it. And you take a real blow with that. You're a moment away from cancellation. This is not what he needed. I couldn't be happier. My Facebook feed was full of this guy. And it's actually like people cared, but they've paid for all of that. They've paid for all the promotion. They've paid for all the clicks. They've paid for all the ads you've seen. There's nothing, there's nothing organic about this at all. Right. You know? No, I get that. Now, see, He's okay, I didn't know all He's got the money to pay that. for yeah. it. Okay, I didn't even know yeah, that no, stuff. Yeah, no, 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 no. All that crap that's... They're, they're, they're paying for that. They're paying for that. And they're paying for people to click it so you get to click it so it gets more clicks. They pay for all that. You know, if you don't understand it, neither do I, but I have a, a, a fleeting uh, touch of insight into it. And if you've got enough money, you can make yourself Jake Paul. You cannot tell me that fight deserved anywhere near the coverage it got or whether it even delivered a result that people cared about. But yet, and yet, and yet here it is, and uh, they're fighting for the kind of money people work lifetimes for and never make it. For that. Yeah. Let's be positive out of Twizel Matt Gunn for Resurrection Distillery. That's the Facebook page, Resurrection Distillery. And you've sent me a fantastic photo, which I've tweeted, which is Dork and Truck tries to get truck. You see, now, when you're driving a truck, one of the key things about a truck is height and length. So when you're looking at bridges, overhangs, roofs, anything like that, you've got to be pretty careful about whether or not the roof's going to get under the awning. Drove into gas station, obviously wedged in there, didn't measure, thought he could squeeze, 
couldn't, takes out all Twizel's power. Yeah, yeah, apparently he was driving up uh, what we call Ruatana for Road, and he could have just, he could have just eased himself left and into the service station. What he decided to do was go right to the T intersection and try and do a 90 degree turn back into the petrol station. It's one of those double trailer units. It's yep. not just a truck. No. It's a truck with two trailers on it. Well, he's got part of the first part of the truck in, but of course, the second part jumps the gutter and takes out a power pole <laughs> in the middle of town. <laughs> now, I went down there to take a photo of it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't not. A young driver, and I, it's that moment, and we've all been there, Martin. He's just sitting in the truck, his head's in his hands, and he's thinking, <laughs> why, why, did I, I why, done? why did I do this? Why? I was cutting a I was trying to do a shortcut. I know that it was going to be a tight squeeze anyway. It's so unnecessary. These are the mistakes in life oh. that we hate the most, aren't they? The ones where we sit back and we just think, God, you're a knob ass. I didn't have to do that. I mean, we are gonna we are gonna no. cock it up because we are men and we are gonna we are gonna do this. But it's the ones where you foot trip yourself where there's no one around. You know, it's just a I didn't need to foot trip myself that time. You know, no. I'm, not, I'm not chasing no. anyone, I'm not no. running, I'm not moving fast, you know. I he's mean, he must, he must have been halfway. He's halfway through the turn, I'm sure, and he's realised, you know, and we, you know, we have all been there. I just, I, I couldn't get to talk to the young man because he was being interviewed by emergency services and police. <laughs> um, but I, I was, you know, my first thought was, my first thought was, I hope he worked for someone else and not his wife. Imagine if his wife's at home and she's booking the trucking jobs. And the other thing, Martin, it's full of stock. Oh, no. It's full of oh, sheep. No, no, no. It's loaded to the gunnels with sheep. No. Right in the middle of town. No. Power's off. No. I had to run around to the radio station to get a generator out. No. I had to fuel it up. Took me 10 <laughs> minutes to kick it over. Power's back on for us now. But I just hope this kid works for someone else that's not in his own family because going home to the wife and saying, I've jackknifed the truck into the petrol station and now we are looking at a bill to get the power back on or whatever that costs. He should have left him. He'd have been alone. So at least if he's got a boss in a shed somewhere, mm. he can go and he can just go. He can just ring him up and break the news, and then yeah, just try and get the truck back tomorrow. Just take a break, go to the pub, you know, have a couple, calm down, and then drive home tomorrow. We don't want you on the road tonight. But if it was the wife, goodness gracious me, let's let's leave it on the Warriors and your doggies because we are a week away from the greatest sporting competition in this part of the world to get back underway and that's the NRL we absolutely love it to bits mate went out to the Warriors today spoke with Sean Johnson and Adam Fanua Blake and just thinking you know the, it, this is the last few days we can cling to before hell happen like it does in every single season so right now Top eight chances, because Costo on the weekend put you guys in at seven. That was just ridiculous. On Friday, he put you in at 80, put you in at 80. He said, you're the big improvers this year. So I'm going to revisit this quote, do remember, throughout the year. Right now, before the season starts, give me the dogs. I'm going to go two higher than Costo, and I'm going to say we are coming in at number six this year, six on the charts. I have already, Martin laid out my bets for the first six weeks. If the doggies do not help me, that is the end of my season for sports betting. I will say this, I have not gone near the Warriors. I've not touched the Warriors. I've never once ever won a single penny on the Warriors and I will not be going back anywhere near the TAB where it mentions Warriors at all. The doggies, number six, the Warriors, I'm sorry to say, Warriors fans, 10th this season. There it is. I've left it clean. We will revisit that quote ad nauseum, ladies and gentlemen. Back to the Basin Reserve. That's Let's Be Positive with Matt Gunn out of Twizel. Highlights of the weekend.